It's the biggest leak in journalism history. The Panama Papers. In companies and individuals across the globe found their most sensitive financial dealings exposed. The most prominent politicians and leaders worldwide are laundering money from out of their own countries and into private bank accounts in offshore tax havens. So the saying goes that there are two certainties in life, death and taxes. And death and taxes are actually quite similar. It's immoral and wrong to evade them forever. But it's much easier to do if you're rich. This was seen in the recent leak of documents from the Panama-based law firm Mossack Fonseca. Which have highlighted a couple of things. The extent of tax avoidance. Inequality. The funding of terrorist operations. Inequality. Money laundering. Inequality. But we know how to handle all of this because leaks like this happen almost every year. And we have this Prime Minister, he's like the modern day version of the Queen, and he always knows how to fix it. In 2013, we had the offshore leaks. Businesses who think they can carry on dodging that fashion, well, they need to wake up and smell the coffee. In 2014, we had the Lux leaks. It was David Cameron who put tax avoidance at the top of the G8 agenda. Then in 2015, there were the Swiss leaks. My responsibility is the tax laws of this country, and no one has been tougher. It's this government that's come along and cracked down on tax evasion. And in 2016, despite all that cracking down, the Panama Papers showed this is still happening on a massive scale, and this time David Cameron is implicated. Well, it's not been a great week. I could have handled this better. He looks slightly sadder each year, you see that? Yeah, maybe we should just get a new one. This Prime Minister is clearly broken. Yeah, they got rid of those in Iceland. It seems like the way to go. Reacting to mounting pressure in major demonstrations after the release of the Panama Papers, Iceland's Prime Minister is resigning. Absolutely, we should just find someone we trust and then put them in a position which gives them lots of power and lots of money. Which are historically things that help people stay trustworthy and make them the kind of people that will really clamp down on tax havens. A tax haven is a country or part of a country that gives very low tax rates and secrecy to people who take their money there. And you can go to these places and set up a company without anybody knowing that you're behind that company. You can put money in it and then you don't have to declare that to the tax authorities or to other financial law enforcers anywhere in the world. The secrecy that tax havens offer allows people to steal money and to squirrel it out of the countries they're in, to wash it really, it's called money laundering. So it looks like legitimate money when it arrives in another place. Let's just get rid of Monsac from Sekamanak and Panama. War, we declare war on Panama. Good, or we could just stop working with them. Better. So there are a lot of people with a lot of influence who want tax havens to continue to operate. Now they would of course say they don't want them doing bad, illegal things. The problem is that as long as they exist, they will do. What we really need to do is to say uh, that's the end of tax havens. We've got to stop these places doing what they do. That does sound better. Now, where are they? The classic tax havens, the Channel Islands, the Gibraltar and the British Virgin Islands, where there are 450,000 companies compared to 20,000 people. Oh man, and some of those are British dependencies. Which maybe means we could impose our own legislation on them. Oh my them. god, because we've always known what's best for other countries. And we kind of own them already, so it should be really easy to Colonialism, do Colonialism, I love it! Oh, do you? Oh no. If we said you've got to stop being a tax haven, these islands would complain that that smacks of colonialism. We would have to think about how their economies would survive Otherwise, uh, half of world trade is, is processed in one way or another through tax havens. But it, it, it's, it's all around us and it's absolutely huge. The United Kingdom, my country, is one of the world's most important tax havens. And right now in Washington, D.C., I'm sitting in uh, one of the world's biggest tax havens as well, the United States. But we can't just not do anything because of the repercussions. There are estimates that around $1 trillion, that's $1,000 billion, leaves developing countries, some of the poorest countries in the world, every year and goes into tax havens. Uh, that's about 10 times as much as they receive in aid every year. So they can't provide the schools and the hospitals that are desperately needed often in these places. There's also financial impact in places like Britain, where if people dodge their taxes here by using tax havens, then we also pay the price. But the other impact, I think, which is perhaps even more important, it allows corrupt people who control countries to steal from their own countries. And that means that uh, they can stay in power. 
So you end up with uh, dictators, very autocratic, very corrupt governments. Uh, but it's everywhere. Um, even in our own country, if you want to be very cynical about it, you can say that the abuse of wealth allows only a certain sort of government. Stealing money through tax havens uh, effectively stifles democracy. Okay, so every year a leak shows that the use of tax havens is damaging the global economy. And that corporations, governments and individuals are doing it. And we never seem to do much about it. But we always say we will. So get excited for the next leak when we're really going to crack down on tax havens. Jimmy Savile, formerly one of TV's biggest stars, molested and raped hundreds of people across several decades. Some of his abusive behaviour was an open secret within the industry. Why didn't someone say something sooner? They did, but they were ignored.